Welcome to the house of the Lord, and welcome to St. Mark Lutheran Church in Leesburg, Florida. I'm Pastor David Rose now. I've been looking forward to spending time with you in God's Word. God bless our time in His Word. I'll begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God invites us to come into His presence and worship Him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask Him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please follow along as I'll offer the prayer of the day. Almighty God, in your bountiful goodness, keep us safe from every evil of body and soul. Make us ready with cheerful hearts to do whatever pleases you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Word of God that is the foundation of our message is recorded in Matthew chapter 21. It's verses 33 to 43. Jesus said, Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and went away on a journey. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? He will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied, and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his share of the crop at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the Scriptures, The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone, The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. The word of our Lord. I'll pray. Lord, open now my heart to hear. And through your word to me draw near. Let me your word ere pure retain. Let me your child and heir remain. Amen. If you knew on Tuesday that your life on earth would end on Friday, what would you do with the three days you had left? Would you even think about taking a nap? Would you even consider going to bed early? Or would you make the most out of the short time you had left? Maybe spend as much time as you could with family. Maybe make a phone call to tell someone, I love you. Maybe a call to tell someone, I forgive you. Maybe a call to say, I'm sorry. Who among us thought, if I could, 
I would spend as much time as I could with my enemies to do everything I could so that they might be with me in heaven like Jesus did when he told this parable about the vineyard and its fruit on Tuesday of Holy Week to people who rejected him, who hated him, and who three days later would kill him. But it wasn't the first time God used this picture to try to shock them to their senses. 700 years before Christ came to speak with them in person, God told the prophet Isaiah to sing a song about his vineyard, hoping to reach their hearts. Israel is his vineyard, and God is the owner of the vineyard. And Isaiah said, I will sing for the one I love a song about his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted it with the choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well. Then he looked for a crop of good grapes, but it yielded only bad fruit. Then he asked Israel, What more could have been done for my vineyard than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes... Why did it yield only bad? God called Israel to be his chosen people, to produce fruits of faith that would point the world to see the coming Savior. But instead of those beautiful fruits, God found only rotten fruits of rejection and self-righteousness as they pointed people to laws they could never obey perfectly instead of pointing them to the Messiah who would for them. God patiently sent more servants, prophets, pastors to proclaim his word. They beat them. They threatened some. And they killed some. But they could not silence God. What should have shook them to their core was when God did stop speaking to them. After the prophet Malachi, God did not send another servant to speak to them for 400 years. That is a deafening and dreadful silence. Just before that silence, God told Malachi to tell them that the day of the Lord is coming. Prepare your hearts to receive him. God said that he would send another prophet when the time was right. God said, see, I will send you the prophet Elijah before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. Elijah had been taken to heaven hundreds of years earlier. Was God going to send Elijah back to earth again? No. The year before Jesus was born, an angel of the Lord appeared to a man named Zechariah, an old man who was serving as a priest in the temple of God. The angel told Zechariah that he was going to give him and his wife a miracle son. The son was John the Baptist. God said he will be the Elijah who was to come because many of the people of Israel will he bring back to the Lord their God and he will go before the Lord in the spirit and the power of Elijah to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That's in Luke chapter 1. John prepared the people by preparing their hearts to receive Jesus. John proclaimed, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world Produce fruits of repentance by turning away from sin. Show the fruit of your faith by turning to him for forgiveness. And over the next three years of his ministry, Jesus, the Lamb of God, preached the same sermon. Turn away from your sins and turn to me. I have come to give you the kingdom of God at no cost to you. I will pay the price with my holy life, a price you cannot pay. Yet even on Tuesday of Holy Week, Jesus looked for but did not find the fruits he sought from his vineyard Israel, repentance and faith. But if they hadn't listened to the servants God had sent them, what would happen 
if they did not listen to his son. Jesus tried to show them with a picture of a vineyard that should have echoed in their ears and trembled in their hearts. Because as in Isaiah, in the parable that Jesus told, God is the owner of the vineyard and the vineyard is his people. God looked for and expected and did everything he needed to do to find a good crop. He sent prophets like Moses and Elijah, prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and the Elijah who was to come, John the Baptist, to collect a harvest of the fruits of repentance and faith. But they treated the servants shamefully. They beat some, they killed some, they stoned some and threw them out. The owner said, I'll send my son. They will respect my son. But they treated him even worse. They threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What more could he have done? Jesus asked them, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to them? He will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied. And he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. And Jesus said, you are convicting yourselves. I came looking for fruits from you, God's vineyard. But you are the ones who are rejecting the Son. God has been patient beyond compare, but his patience does have an end. Remember the scriptures? The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. I am the rock you are rejecting. You are about to throw the Son out of the vineyard and kill him. But you will not get the inheritance of heaven that way. God gives you the gift of heaven through faith in me. But you want it your way. The rock you are rejecting will become a capstone that crushes you in your unbelief. And the kingdom will be given to those who do believe. God had sent his son patiently looking for fruits from his vineyard. Two days later they arrested him. And a day after that, they took him outside the vineyard and killed him. Why did Matthew record this parable for us to hear today? God wants all people to be saved. No one comes to Christ on their own. Christ must first come to us. And he comes to us in his word, seeking fruits of repentance and fruits of faith. Fruits of repentance that show it bothers us when we're not right with God. Fruits of repentance that walks away from a sin, not live in it. Fruits of repentance that show we want to live holier today than we did the day before, not seeking or trying to earn God's approval, but to show our thank you, Jesus, to show our I love you, Jesus, for all you have done for me. Fragrant fruits of faith like peace, love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control so that others will want to have that in their lives and will want to know how can they have life in his kingdom too. Fruits of faith that trusts God knows better than we do. Faith that trusts God enough to have a humility that can consider others better than ourselves. Faith that looks not only to our own interests, but also to the interests of others and does what might be best for them. Faith that trusts God is with you in an illness, 
through a disease, through a chronic pain, through a heartache. Faith that trusts God will give you the strength he knows is best to give you day by day by day until that glorious day when you will have more than you need. No one's going to see fruits like those on days that we can be so quick to be so angry. No one's going to see fruits of joy when all they hear is negative because we focus on ourselves and all that is bad instead of keep looking to see Jesus and to see all that is good. No one's going to see fruits of, faith, of peace when we allow discord to brew and grudges to grow because we can't say I'm sorry and we're not willing to say I forgive you. No one's going to see patience unless we show it. No one's going to see the fruits God is looking for in our lives without each one of us first receiving and believing the kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control that God showed you and me when he showed us his great and gracious love without limit. The patience and the love and the mercy and the forgiveness that he sent his son to show us with his life. By grace, he is the cornerstone that we are built upon in faith instead of the capstone that crushes unbelief. He feeds our souls. He strengthens our faith. He nourishes us to produce fruits in keeping with repentance He is the water of life, the living water that courses through our veins to produce fruits of faith. He sends his spirit to remind us through his word when we forget, yes, I am with you, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. He sends his Holy Spirit to remind us through his body and blood together with the bread and the wine of his Holy Supper when we doubt, yes, I have forgiven you. He sends his Holy Spirit to remind us who we are when we remember the robe of righteousness that Jesus draped over us in the waters of our baptism. And he continues to send servants, pastors, to work in his vineyard to nourish and encourage fruits of faith by proclaiming the life-giving, faith-sustaining power of his word. Dear Christian, God patiently seeks fruits of faith in your life because he wants others to see them and to hear them so that they will see and hear him. And the world needs to see and hear him now more than ever before. So hear his word every chance you have. Study his word. I will help you in our Bible studies. Please come. Remember your baptism and receive the Lord's Supper at every opportunity because the Lord will work through the means of grace, his word and the sacraments, to strengthen your faith and to produce the very fruits he's looking for. The fruits of faith that he needs others to see while there's still time. Amen. I'm going to offer a prayer for us, and at the end, I'm going to invite you to please join together with me. We'll pray the Lord's Prayer. Great God and Lord, Without your continuing help, we easily waver in our faith, lose courage, and grow careless in our watchfulness. The times and days are perilous. Give us strength to face the evils of each day with fresh confidence. Open our lips to speak of your grace, and move us to use the gifts that you give us to share your word of salvation with all people. Protect and prosper the family, the school, the government and all good institutions that you have established for the benefit of society. Bless and protect all who are working to keep us safe and free, those in law enforcement and in health care and in our military, 
Remember in mercy those who are sick and suffering and bring your healing to troubled homes and lives. Move us to pray for those in need and to help them with deeds of kindness. For these things and so much more, we pray the prayer Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear Christian, receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for committing your time to spend with me in God's word like this. Wherever you may be, close by, far away, God strengthen you. God lift your spirits with the one thing needful, with the one thing that will never fail you, his word and reminders of his loving protection over you. God bless your day today. God bless your week. I'll see you real soon.